It's February and we've got a lot of work to do in the garden. Come and join me. Hey guys, welcome back to Horticulture Geek. Thank you so much for joining me today here on the channel. I'm Ray and welcome to my garden. And yes, as you just heard, it is February. Um, if you have been with my channel for a while, you know that I have not been posting videos because I have been winter hibernating. <laughs> I have been taking full advantage of it being the winter time and I did not do hardly anything in the garden in the month of January. Um, I took that time to rest because February is a very busy month in the garden. Uh, so I hope you have also had some time to rest and I hope that you're ready to go to get to work in your garden. If you're new to gardening, welcome. Um, I hope this channel can provide you some practical tips and advice. Um, I am here in central Arkansas, just to give you a framework. Um, and I'm zone 7B8A with the new zone map shift that occurred this past year. Um, I'm in that 7B8A range. Um, traditionally a solid seven, so we shifted up a little bit. Uh, so that gives you a framework of where I'm at in my garden. And this is a small suburban backyard garden. Um, and so today, what we are gonna be doing is I'm going to give you guys a glimpse of the state of the garden as it is right now. Um, I have began my spring, late winter spring cleanup. Um, if you are familiar with gardening, you know a lot of people do fall cleanup or they do spring cleanup. Um, I actually do a combination of both. Um, there are some things that I went ahead and picked up at the fall. Um, there's a few things I picked up here, there, and yonder, but this weekend I have started full cleanup. Um, all of my perennials have been cut back um, and I have started cleaning out my beds. Now, caveat to that, some people will tell you don't clean out your flower beds full, like leave the fallen leaves and leave the, the, the organic material so that it can go back into the ground and help your garden. I love that. I am a full component of that. But <laughs> um, I just had my fence replaced. As a lot of you know who have been with me for a while, um, we had a tornado come through central Arkansas um, in the fall and a huge tree. You used to, could not see, if you go to some of my older videos, there was a gigantic oak tree back there in a neighbor's yard. So above my fence, all you could see was tree. That tree was lost in the storm and it unfortunately fell in my yard and took out my fence and parts of my shed, which have been rebuilt. So I had to have a fence contractor come in and rip out all the old fence. He had to build my new fence. In the process of that, all of my flower beds were trampled down. Uh, debris was dropped in my flower beds. So my flower beds were really just in a bad state. Um, so I have gone through and I have started raking out my flower beds just to ensure that I get all the trash out of there and that I can inspect all of my plants, okay? Um, as I'm doing my perennial cutback, I need to see, is there damage? Do I need to add soil around the crown of some of these plants around these areas. So that's why I am doing a full clean out. Another big reason that you as a gardener may choose to do a big clean out. If you have heavy bug pressure in your garden and you don't have enough natural remedies to take care of that bug pressure, you probably we're gonna to wanna to clean out your flower beds because um, bugs will overwinter, they will lay eggs in all of that debris in the top of the soil there. And as the temperatures warm in the spring, all of those bugs will hatch or wake up and come back up and you've left that problem in your garden to perpetuate it for another year. So if you have heavy bug pressure in your garden, you don't want to leave a lot of debris. Unfortunately, that means that yes, you will also be removing whatever beneficials were overwintering in that garden as well. But it's a pro and con here. If you have way more harmfuls than you do beneficials, it's in my humble opinion, 
better to get the problem in check and then do things going down the road to re-invite the beneficials back into your yard once the bad things are dealt with, okay? That's my opinion. Everybody has to do that as they see fit for their garden and their home. Um, so that's gonna be what I tell you today. So we're just gonna do a quick walk around and I'm gonna show you where we're at. It's not looking great. <clears throat> so the garden is chopped back. There's a few things here and there. Um, I've still got piles of debris that have to be bagged and gotten out of the garden. Um, again, because pest pressures, debris, and trash, okay? If, if these were just plain leaves or pine needles that had fallen from trees, there was no trash, there was no bugs, and there was no debris, then I could bag these things up and put them in a compost pile. But because of my situation this year, all of these piles of debris are going to be bagged and removed from the garden. And that's important. It's especially if you have pest pressure, because if you've just spent the time to rake all those pests and clean your beds up, and you take all that stuff and set it somewhere else on your property for a compost pile, they're just gonna hatch in your compost pile and come back to the garden. So if you have problems, bag it and get rid of it, okay? Get it off of your property, send it away. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be working on today. I've got to finish bagging up all this debris um, and get that out of here. And then the other thing we're working on today is my raised bed over here. Um, as you can see, I have that raised bed up against that fence. When the fence was installed, that had to be shifted a little bit. So I have lost soil in there. So I've got to, I spent some time this morning and I've got it repositioned where I want it. Um, I've got the soil that was left kind of worked up and then I've got fresh soil and amendments to put in there. And then we are going to be relocating some things into that raised bed. Um, you can't see it on camera, let me show you right here. So right here, I have some cool season crops planted and I have decided that this is where I want my onions to go. <clears throat> it is time to plant onions. So I'm going to be moving these cabbages and kales over to the raised garden and then I'm going to be amending and preparing this soil for my onions. So that's our agenda for today. I hope you will stick around. Let's flip this camera around and we're just gonna do a real quick walk to give you a lay of the land so you can have a frame of reference for how the garden season is starting here at Horticulture Geek. And then we're gonna get into these projects. Here. All right, I'm just gonna do a slow pan around the garden here. So this is a very different garden in winter than it is in the summer. All right, so as you can see, I mean, obviously my patio furniture is covered. My rug is still a mess. So, but let's get over here. <clears throat> um, this is a lace cap hydrangea. I've already trimmed him up and cleaned him up. And then you can see I've started cleaning out my flower beds. Now, I did not go gangbusters on my flower beds um, because I don't have pest pressure. I simply got debris out of my area. And the other thing I did is this is a huge drift of hostas through here. Hostas overwinter snails and slugs. So you have to be very careful with hostas. And I do have snails and slugs in this garden. So all of that old hosta foliage had to be removed and the hostas had to be cut back to the ground. So I, this area has been cleaned of the hostas. All right, here is another hydrangea. This one has not been pruned yet. So you can see this one still has some work to do. We will prune that um, probably in a video. So like here's a pile of debris you, I've raked out. You can see there's little pieces of broken fence. There's little bits of trash and just other things that, that had to come out of these beds. Um, there's still some old plant tags in the ground. Those will need to come up. Those were for things I planted last year and I marked them obviously with their tags.
this container was absolutely glorious before we had a big snowstorm um, a few weeks back and the snow just weighed it down and froze everything. It will rebound, but I've got to get in there and clean it up and give it some, just a little help to bounce back. Um, irises, um, I have a patch of iris here, a small patch of iris there, and another patch of iris there. Um, these are always good things. If you have irises, get in there and rake all that old foliage out um, so that it doesn't create too much of a mat and smother out other things. But you can see, I mean, I've already got tulips coming up. Um, there's a hollyhock that's still going. The irises are starting to flush. Um, daffodils are already starting to come up here for me. So it is time. Roses, February is the month we prune roses. Um, we will do that at some point, not today. And again, you can see I've come through, I've raked, I've got big loads of debris out. I haven't removed everything and that's okay. Um, because I just was working on getting trash out of my beds. Um, so you can see some of the debris piles, but I am leaving some and that's okay. Um, when I come through with mulch, the mulch will hide all that and the organic material that's left will just add back to the soil and that'll be just fine. All right, and then those right there, so back again where we see the veggies that we're gonna move. So that brings us to our project. So now that you have a frame of reference of where the garden is starting, um, as we progress through videos this year, um, you can just watch the garden grow with me. But let's get in here and tackle this project. All right, so here's a close up of this raised bed. And this is a Vegiga raised metal bed in the green finish. Um, I do have a promo code for Vegiga products if you want to order raised beds if you're looking for something like this I love this raised bed I do have a video about putting this together I will link it here um, and then my promo code is um, on the screen and it will be in the comment section as well or in the description of this video for you to get 10% off of your own Vegiga raised bed products so I absolutely love this raised bed. Now, if I pan slowly, I don't want to make anybody sick. My big raised bed down there is a traditional raised bed built out of wood. Um, I've already had to replace some sections of it. I need to replace the back section of it. That is going to be a huge undertaking. And that is something when you use wood to build your raised beds, it is a constant maintenance and upkeep because obviously the soil um, rots the wood. It makes it soft and the wood absorbs water. It deteriorates. We don't deal with that in raised beds that are metal like this Vegiga bed. Obviously, it is a larger investment on the front end to invest in these metal raised beds, but this raised bed doesn't absorb moisture. It doesn't rot. It doesn't deteriorate. It just stays put and I can tap it, cap it off with soil each year and keep going. So Vegiga raised beds, if you're in the market, use my promo code down below to get 10% off your order. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna be putting in some raised bed soil mix and some manure. So let's get in here and do this. Okay, so as I said, I have already come through and worked this soil. So it's nice and loose and ready to go. So we just have to top this off now and get all this new soil in and get that mixed up.
and that's all there is to it. So now I'm gonna go start grabbing my cold season vegetables, my broccolis and kales, <clears throat> and bring those over here and get them planted. All right, so here I am with my kales and I've got chard and I've got cabbages in here. Now, it is not ideal to move these plants, but as gardeners, we change our minds. The good news is for me here in zone 7B, 8A, because I am so warm, I planted all these things in the fall. They have sat here all winter long and they have survived. Um, some of them have some winter burn on them. They'll grow right out of that, but they haven't really set in and grown too much. Um, so it, I have time to move these things. Um, obviously if spring had already arrived and these things were just shooting out roots and fresh growth like crazy, it really would not be ideal to move them, but I'm fine to do that. So here we go. So all I'm gonna do is I'm using a hori hori knife. Um, this is a garden trowel that has a sharpened knife blade and a um, serrated knife blade on one end. Um, these are amazing in the garden. Um, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to really get in there and, and work the soil without just having to hack at the dirt. Um, so I'm going to, as carefully as I can, reach in around these plants. Like I said, their roots should not have spread out too far um, and grab them and then just kind of put them in my bucket and tote over there. So here we go. All right, so I've got my kale and my cabbages in the raised bed. Um, and these are dinosaur kales. They're the ones that get really big. So I'm gonna put them towards the back. I'm gonna put my cabbages towards the front. Um, and then I actually still have some space right down the middle that I can come in and plant something else if I want to. Maybe uh, once things get a little warmer, uh, maybe some beets or some lettuce or some carrots. Um, perfect opportunity to plant other things along with these crops. So now all I've got to do, I've got a basic layout, is just plug these right into the dirt. Now, as you saw, I did amend this soil with um, compost and manure. Um, I'm also going to be adding in some Biotone starter fertilizer, just because I have messed with the roots of these plants and because I love that product and I put it in everything I plant. Um, Biotone is a um, starter fertilizer that focuses on root development. It provides essential mycorrhiza into the soil that all plants need to establish and set roots. So let me go get my Biotone and we're gonna get these planted. Okay, so here is the Vegiga raised bed, planted up, and as you can see, I've still got room. 
and the cabbages all have room to head up and grow and the kales will have room to grow up as well. Let's move on to our next project. All right. So now I have this section here where my old veggies were that I just dug up and I wanna get my onions planted in this section. So before I can plant onions though, I've gotta prepare this bed. Now, um, one of the things, if you notice, um, if, we could, if you probably noticed a minute ago, um, I do have mulch in this bed. Um, I put mulch down to help suppress the weeds when I had the cabbages and the kales and all that stuff here. I don't need that here right now to prepare the bed for onions. So I've got to rake all of that mulch out of this bed and get this bed cleaned up and ready to go. And then I am going to be adding, let me show you right here, some amendments to this bed as well. Onions are heavy, heavy feeders. So I'm going to be putting in just some fresh, loose, fluffy soil. I'm gonna to have to turn all this soil over to get it fresh and loose, then add in some fresh soil. Then I'm gonna add in some compost and some manure, and I'm gonna be adding in some biotone, and I'm gonna be adding in some other um, slow release fertilizer as well to get this place ready to then plant the onions. We won't plant the onions today. We'll do that in a separate video. But today I am going to get this bed ready during this video. So here we go. So I've got a rough clean out done. It does not have to be perfect because um, that was a large chunk mulch. It was not a fine ground mulch. I just need a lot of those big chunks out of my way. The few that remain are fine. There is a little bit of weed pressure. So I'm gonna get in here, get these weeds pulled up real quick, get my sidewalk cleaned up and then start getting in here and churning this soil.
All right, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for me here today. Off camera, I went ahead, as you can see, I smoothed out, blend, incorporated all the amendments I added there, and I raked it and smoothed it out. Um, and then I've also come back through and cleaned up all of my concrete, got all the final debris, got my leaf blower out, and got things kind of in a semi-good state. So that's the name of the game for February, is get your garden ready and start working on things that you can go ahead and do now. Um, like I said, it's time to plant onions. I'm gonna be doing that in another video. It's time to take care of fruit trees. We're gonna be doing that in a video. Um, if you're gonna plant potatoes, it's time to do that. It's time to prune roses. There is lots and lots to do during the month of February. So I hope you'll stay tuned. I'll be putting out more videos with more content and different things um, to show you what I'm doing here in the Horticulture Geek Garden and hopefully inspire you in your garden. Um, it is starting to rain here, so I think I better wrap this up. I hope you have enjoyed this video today um, and I appreciate you coming back to the garden with me for the 2024 season and for our kickoff video here. So if you have um, enjoyed this video, please give me that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And if you just have anything you wanna say, tips or advice to other gardeners out there, throw that in the comments as well. Don't forget, you can also join me on Facebook. Um, and I uh, hope this video has inspired you and encouraged you to get out and start getting your 2024 garden ready. But until next time, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening.